Hey guys, just three things I want to talk to you guys about before we even get started with today's video. Number one is whenever you're on one of my videos, there are two annotations that you should know about. There's boom, one there, and boom, one there. Basically, the one on the left is uh, just go to the previous video before that one. The one on the right is to go to the next. Number two is I'm going to be releasing videos every other day. And it's not only going to be quick tips, it's going to be a lot more. We're going to engage in uh, filmmaking a lot more since I have a lot of um, assets that I could use. And yeah, you're going to be surprised with what comes out and make sure to stay subscribed. And number three, if you do have any questions whatsoever, it doesn't have to be primarily on a Mac system, it could be on a Windows system as well, let me know down in the comments or send me an email at cupofjody.com. Thank you very much, and uh, make sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and yeah, let's get started. Thank you very much. Hey, what's up everyone? Today is a great day to learn more about Final Cut Pro 10. This quick tip number four is uh, brought to you by me, of course. Uh, anyway, in this tip, what we're going to learn is how to bring an old concept from Final Cut Pro 7 back into Final Cut Pro 10. Now you might say, hey dude, come on, Final Cut Pro 7, you have to move on already. I didn't say about the program, I said a concept. So basically, this concept is going to help you edit faster, it's going to make your machine perform more smoother and it's gonna change your experience overall in Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so let's get started. A little bit about what we're gonna do first. Some background information. In Final Cut Pro 7, the legacy version of Final Cut Pro, there was one concept that everyone used, whether you were a professional or whether you were a beginner. It was based it was that concept of creating sequences. Now, what a sequence is, in short terms, is basically the timeline in which you make your edits in. And in Final Cut Pro 7, when you click on your browser window and press Command plus N, you would make a new sequence. Now, this how, how would this help, you know, uh, a user? Let's say you're creating a feature film, or maybe a television show. And there's, of course, scene 1, scene 2, scene 3, and beyond. So you would, you know, make a sequence for each scene. Make your edits in that sequence, in that timeline, and then make a master sequence and bring all those sequences together into one. Export, deliver, and you're done with your great film. So basically, it was so easy, and it was awesome because you could organize yourself, you could make a great workflow, you could uh, tell, you know, uh, your friend or an editor to come and work on sequence 2 while you work on sequence 5. That was super awesome. And in Final Cut Pro 10, uh, I think that Apple missed that concept. And uh, But don't worry, we're going to discover a way to bring that whole concept back. We're going to be the pioneers behind this. And um, let's get started. So basically, in Final Cut Pro 10, let me open it up. It should open up in five seconds. Anyway, in Final Cut Pro 10, a sequence is considered a project. So every time you would make a new project, you would make a new timeline. Okay, great. Now look at my screen. Now back to me. No, I'm just kidding. Look at my screen. I have two sets of uh, storage devices here, my MacBook Pro hard drive and uh, my uh, external hard drive. Now notice that I have no projects right now. Why is that? Because I want to demonstrate something. So if you want to make a new sequence, a new project you would create a new project and then you would title it let's title this um, sequence number one okay great we click OK boom we could just make our edits there and basically everything will fall into order now let's say we want to work on sequence two but we don't have a sequence two so what we have to do is we have to go back to the reels and then make a new project. You could either make a new project by clicking this little plus here, create a new project, or you could duplicate this. 
if you want to retain the settings. Maybe it was a 1080 and you still want to work on 1080 even though you have 720 you know, P footage. So let's duplicate the project only. Great, look at the bottom. You could just retitle this uh, sequence two. Okay, cool. Now let's click on se sequence two and notice the name here, sequence two. Let's say we want to go back to sequence one. Just click that. Now right now it seems and it looks like it's super fast. We're, I'm just clicking the button and we're going back and forth. But due to some experimentation that I've done with Final Cut Pro 10, it's not as simple and it's not as awesome as it currently looks. Now let's say we have a lot of edits in sequence two and sequence one, and we want to change between each sequence. Okay, you would have to click on this arrow, but if you have a lot of edits in those sequences, you're going to have to wait until sequence two starts loading. So you're going to have to wait for loading times. And let's say you have 17 sequences and you want to go from sequence 2 to sequence 17. You're not going to click one, 16 times to the right to go to sequence 17. No, no, no. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cl click on this little reel here. And you're going to go and scroll down to sequence 17. Now, if you have content in every sequence and you go back, you're going to have to wait until every sequence every project that you have on here loads and that's gonna take so long it's probably gonna take maybe uh, five minutes depending on your computer and I am I am on a uh, high-end MacBook Pro at the moment so even with that it's it's straining so basically this is inefficient and this is not cool this is not cool Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make and bring the old concept of Final Cut Pro 7 back into this new platform, and you're going to love it, and you're going to use it, and you'll, I'll, I'll show you how, uh, I'll show you some workflows right after we learn how to do it. So basically, let's ignore this for now, and don't think about using this technique anymore. It's not an efficient technique, and it will just drag you down, especially if you want to edit really quickly. So let's uh, delete these projects. Okay, Command Delete to delete them. All right, we're left with no projects now. Cool. Now you could have. Uh, now here's the first step. You must have your event active. So in this case, it's Jody helps out. Now let me uh, expand my events browser so you could see a little bit more. Okay, cool. Now, as you could notice, I have a lot of media right now. So let me uh, make it smaller so you could see. I have a lot of media in this event. Cool. Now, here's how we're going to do a sequence. Basically, you grab any two media. It could be, it has to be video. So here's a rule of thumb. Always select two videos or more. Never select one. So, basically, I have one video here and I have another one here. So select this first video, then select this one, and now we're going to make a compound clip. Here's another rule of thumb. Do not use a keyboard shortcut to make a compound clip because it will make one to your existing project or it won't work. Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. We have two videos selected. It could be any two, doesn't matter. You're going to go up to the file command file menu and you're gonna go down to where it says new compound clip keyboard shortcut option G but don't use a keyboard shortcut use a file menu click on it once and it says uh, what do you want to name this uh, compound clip let's name it sequence one sequence number one and the video properties could be custom let's say you wanna um, you know, edit in 1080 or whatever you want, your frame rate. Um, I'm going to set it automatically based on the first clip for now. And then the audio and render properties. Uh, I'm going to choose custom, custom, and stereo. Great. Sequence one. Okay, cool. Now you click OK. Boom. There it is. As you can tell, sequence one. It's titled sequence one. So double click on this. And boom. There we go. It loads. Let me uh, shift Z this so you can see the entire thing. Now that you have this sequence made, just delete the media inside. And then get working on your timeline. It's that easy. Okay, that's how you make sequences. 
but then you're gonna you're probably asking hey Joe what's up um, how is this efficient well let me uh, show you a workflow that I do now click on your event right click on the event and go to new keyword collection shift command K cool now title this uh, keyword folder sequences click enter I mean yeah click enter go back to your event your main event so you can see everything and then locate the uh, sequence that we just made so let's go down and there it is oh hold on there we go sequence one there it is it's uh, it's black because I deleted everything you basically just drag this to your sequences folder like so let me see uh, probably because I have no media let me uh, put something there and uh, okay that's fine grab your sequence see how it changed uh, alrighty so it's right there it's right here sequence one grab sequence one drag it to your sequences folder and that's it and when you double click on the sequence one in your sequences keyword folder you're gonna you know go down here and edit now let's say you want to make another sequence all you have to do is uh, grab the sequence duplicate it by pressing command D and rename it sequence 2 and so on we make another one let's uh, title this sequence 3 great now you know basically click on sequence 2 sequence 3 and that's it that's how you make sequences in Final Cut Pro 10 and that's my workflow and that's how I use it now how is this gonna help you out look whenever you have you have a list here in your event you know in your events events um, media so basically you scroll down to the sequences folder you're gonna access all of your sequences there and you could work on each sequence that you want now if you were to do it the other way you would have to go back to the reel here and you would click on it and you would have to wait for everything to load okay then you click on the sequence that you want to work on and then it's gonna load again thus making your workflow super sluggish and basically you're not gonna edit as efficiently as you would like to so here in uh, this event you don't even have to create a new project you just work off the sequences that you create here and that's it and you could even make uh, another sequence that's titled master sequence and put all of these into there okay here's another tip that I use uh, that I uh, work with basically I create a new project okay and I call this master sequence sequence and I will put it as a, a default event in my Jody helps out event and there basically I grab all of these sequences the ones that I edited individually and just put them here in the master sequence and that's how I'm gonna deliver my film so that's how you do it and that's how you work with sequences in Final Cut Pro 10 I hope this tip helped you a lot because there was a lot of explanation and um, it's gonna help you out significantly in your editing process and in your editing workflow overall now please share this video Share it with uh, those Final Cut Pro 10 users because I think they should all know this before anything because um, Final Cut Pro 10 offers a lot of speed, it offers a lot of features, but they're just hidden, okay? But it has a lot, a lot of potential to make any film come to life. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. I know this was long, and uh, before we actually uh, exit, I just want to give you a... Uh, an explanation you might ask hey Joe these are quick tips what's up why are they so long well basically quick tip for me what it means is basically the action that's performed is quick okay so the learning process takes a little bit of time but once you perform what you learned it's gonna be super quick because you're gonna have it in your mind so that's what I mean by quick tips so keep that in mind and also make sure to subscribe to this channel JD spider-man 3 for more 
videos and I'm going to bring a lot more videos every other day and it's going to be about Final Cut Pro 10, After Effects and basically I'm going to expose all the secrets there is to filmmaking because not a lot of people do that but I'm going to show you how to make great content out of anything and you're going to be surprised to what we're going to do. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and I hope uh, you subscribe and also if you have a question about anything leave a comment down below or send me and hit me up at uh, cupofjody at gmail.com I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much and I hope you have a great day. Check out my last few videos. Alrighty then. Bye bye.